the center, in accordance with the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, believe that it is imperative that patients meet with a psychologist when they are deciding whether or not to pursue third-party reproduction. This meeting is more of a psychoeducational consultation than a counseling session, and it's an opportunity for me to provide you with all of the information you need to make the right decision for you. The purpose of this meeting is not for me to judge and decide whether or not you should be parents. The purpose of the meeting is to make sure you are fully prepared with the, all, the, all of the information you need and have discussed all the potential psychosocial issues that could arise and the decision making that could come up during the process so that when you commit to and consent to moving forward with third party reproduction, you feel really comfortable and confident in that decision. In donor sperm and donor egg consultations, uh, we meet for approximately an hour and a half to discuss how you got to this point of deciding whether or not donor egg or donor sperm is the right decision for you and how you feel about some of the important decisions that might come up along the way. So my responsibility is first to make sure that you have all of the information you need before making this decision and it's only after we know that you have all the information you need to make the decision that we feel comfortable with your giving true informed consent to moving forward with donor egg or donor sperm conception. So in these consultations, we talk about things like your process up to this point, your feelings about using um, donor egg or donor sperm to conceive and possibly having one or both of you not being genetically related to this child, and whether or not you have any concerns or potential resentments about that because that's a complicated piece. We talk about decisions such as disclosure to your support system, disclosure to the child someday, what age, what you want the message to be, what, you know, what your beliefs are in terms of keeping potential secrets from that child, and we really talk through that. That's a big piece of our consultation. We talk about factors that are important in terms of finding the right donor for you so that you feel really good about the person you pick as a donor and what the options are in terms of finding that donor and we discuss the legal aspects of using third-party reproduction, specifically gamete donation, to build your family. One of the biggest and more complex pieces that's come up recently is the issue of anonymity. So we still call this anonymous egg donation or anonymous sperm donation, but to be honest, there is no guarantee to that anonymity anymore. And we talk through that and how you feel about that and what your thoughts are about the potential contact that the child could have with their donor someday. We do offer identified sperm donation and identified egg donation with someone you already know. And um, if we do that kinds of cons kind of consultation, it gets a little bit more involved in that I would have to meet with the donor as well as the recipients so that we make sure everybody's on the same page about the psychosocial issues that could arise and the decision making and the relationship in the future. Consultations for gestational carrier arrangements are quite complex because the relationship that you're building with the gestational carrier is a longer term relationship. You're going to get to know her, you're going to need to match with the right person. And so in addition to assessing the readiness of each party, so the readiness of the intended parents, as well as the readiness of the gestational carrier and her partner if she has one, my responsibility is to make sure that I'm assessing the appropriateness of the arrangement, of the match, of the relationship you'll have together. So the components of a gestational carrier consultation um, are threefold. One is that I would meet with the intended parents. I would then also meet with the gestational carrier and provide psychological testing on that carrier. And then we would meet for a joint session with all parties involved. And during those consultations, we discuss similar issues to what are discussed in the donor sperm, donor egg consultation, such as disclosure to the child, disclosure to the um, support systems, but then it expands from there. So we talk about the potential risks of 
pregnancy and decision making that might have to go along with that pregnancy. So in cases of fetal anomalies, how people feel about making the decision about pregnancy termination, making sure that the intended parents and the gestational carrier are in agreement about how that decision would be made. We talk about the potential risk of multiple gestation, even though those risks are very small, there is that possibility and we would need to make sure that all parties involved are in agreement about whether or not they would want to continue with a multiple pregnancy or want to consider selective reduction. We talk about the potential grief that goes along with not being able to carry a pregnancy yourself for the intended mother and how they feel about having someone else carry that pregnancy for them. We also talk about expectations of the relationship. So again, as I said, this is a longer term relationship. You're going to get to know this person pretty well. You possibly will get to know her family. What are your expectations in terms of that relationship? Do you want to become very friendly with her? Or do you expect it to be more of a business relationship? Or, um, or what, and what are the expectations afterwards? So do you imagine that she's going to be part of your life even after delivery? Do you imagine that she'll know the child, possibly have a relationship with the child, and what are your expectations of that? All expectations are actually totally appropriate, but we need to, I need to make sure that the parties involved are in agreement. So if you expect a total business relationship, that you don't get to know her all that well, don't become really friendly, then that's fine as long as that's what the gestational carrier is expecting too. It's when those expectations don't match that people end up not being satisfied and not feeling really good about that match. So we also talk about the contract process, the legal process involved in using a gestational carrier, and it gets to be a pretty complex discussion. So these consultations usually take about two, two and a half hours um, each, and by the time we finish, um, it's my responsibility to make sure that the arrangement is a good one and we're set up for success in that when everything is finished, even though I can't guarantee that everybody's going to be thrilled, when everything's finished people are satisfied that you were prepared for the process and that it was a good match. Mm -hmm.